Hi, welcome to a new video dedicated to a new brushless riser from iFlight. This is the iFlight EH3 Pro. So what we have, we have first of all a BNF version. Here with a FearSky XM Plus uh, receiver, but you can find it with a FlySky EFH2 uh, protocol compatible. But we have a 140mm uh, Pure carbon frame based eraser with a run cam split mini inside. So it means that you can not only broadcast uh, the uh, signal in your favorite FPV goggles but as well record simultaneously uh, your uh, video full flux in 1080p 60 frames per second. So uh, thanks to this great uh, run cam uh, module. What we have also, uh, we have some uh, strong motors, some 4006 are uh, spinning at 4100 kV and they are 4S compatible. We are 4 in 1, uh, 25 amper uh, ESC, Bell LES, uh, D Shop 600 are uh, ready. And uh, what we have also, our F4 board. Okay, so um, let's discover the content of this small uh, BNF box. Okay, let's start with accessories. We have first two panels of stickers, one black, one uh, uh, white. So to stick uh, somewhere on your quadcopter or your radio transmitter. And let's start with this first bag of transmitter. We have a cloverleaf antenna. It's a right polarization, circular polarization from Foxair. The uh, Loli Pop one, if you need, uh, they are from uh, RPS email connector, if I'm right, wrong. About uh, 7.5 gram individually. We have also this uh, GST to XT30 uh, changer, okay, 2 gram. We have two LN key, okay, to, uh, for example, to remove the top uh, carbon plate and smaller to uh, remove, for example, the electronic tower and so on. We have a uh, e shrink tube to be cut into to install on the um, uh, antenna. Okay, I will explain later. Okay, so you have to cut into uh, this uh, excellent dual lock from 3M to attach your battery. So it's very efficient, very easy to. Uh, uh, remove it to install some a lot of uh, small uh, egg screws. Okay, we have four bags more for the props. Okay, not for the prop because we have some nylon bots uh, nuts. We have a second uh, battery strap. Okay, more or less with a top leather structure. Uh, what we have some small three pin and one uh, 90 degrees uh, one uh, maybe uh, I don't know what he used for uh, some accessories most for the uh, run cam split mini so for example some small cable here and a changer to enter on the USD here to uh, micro USB to for example to uh, plug to any receiver or some stuff like this. So a lot of accessories dedicated with the Rancam Split Mini. And finally here, I don't know why, we have a small, small, small uh, voltage regulator. Okay, uh, I don't know, maybe exporting to a, a plus five volts, very, very small amperage. Now have a look to the machine standalone. Tilili. Okay, so it's not light. So let's give an information about the weight okay immediately so i will remove the uh run can split mini caps and the antenna caps and immediately 173 and we don't have the antenna so it will be even more uh ever okay and what is missing in my packaging and it was assumed to be here there is no props <laughs> they forgot to answer some props uh, there are officially some three inch uh, some uh, 30 63 and i don't have some uh, only some 53 so with less pitch so i will install them and you will need uh, uh to re to install them thanks to this kind of uh, uh Range okay, it's an M8 format, so you will have to install them gently and uh, no uh, left uh, thread. Okay, so you will definitively to tie them very gently, okay, and very carefully uh, in order to not lose a props mid flight. So, uh, just I want to uh, give you the information about the total weight, okay. And as you can see, there is not a lot of free room available from the frame, so three inch props are the maximum. Uh, the thread, okay, I can give you required some five inch. Uh, 
five inch uh, props okay some three inch maximum okay and let's continue here with the uh, other props so i've got only uh this uh, black one okay um no, sorry it's more uh, this one okay and you will see that the total weight will be above 180 grams so uh, close to 20 grams more heavier than their photo advertising it was advertised to be around 160 grams so mm -hmm. so maybe they forgot just a zero and can split mini module inside so the total weight without the battery is about 107 87 grams so imagine with the, this battery it's just a 500 4s model we are close to 250 grams wow we're close to the 250 gram limitation it's not clearly not light quadcopter and uh, if you need exactly the exact dimension what we have we have exactly a 100 okay 150 40 sorry mimerous machine um let's check now the structure we have some okay three millimeters carbon harm okay with this uh, profile here and the extremity to absorb some uh, lateral shock uh, here with some aluminum stand up we have these two millimeters upper carbon plate okay and in case of crash okay the, and you can see that the camera holder the carbon one is also two millimeters yes yes and is whole by the bottom side thanks to these two uh, carbon notch and attach as well or maintain via the upper structure so what happened in case of lateral frontal crash a lot of stress will be here and probably will be broken here okay the notch inserted into the uh, bottom arm will probably break but at least well whatever whatever we will check that whatever no not necessarily look that when you are in very uh, uh, low tilt angle the uh, lens is a little bit exposed to frontal crush but uh, with a very high and aggressive pitch is not really the case so be aware and be gently when you manipulate because you have this ribbon cable from the ram cam split mini so you know it's known to be a little bit fragile so let's continue we have this um, uh, 1408 motors okay 4100 with some bottom uh, nuts okay to be locked so it will require some force to straight uh, all this uh, mechanism uh, let's continue and we have two tower the more front is the rank and split mini okay and you as you may know at least for the first version we have two board uh, the lower got a micro USB in case you want to, uh, for example, uh, to upgrade uh, or to access to some uh, export some data. Okay, and the uh, lower also welcome and already pre installed the micro SD card slot. Okay, so you will need to uh, gently raise or bend down this uh, uh, metallic bar. Okay, I will release the micro SD card and then you can access to the uh, micro SD. I uh, prefer a class 10 minimum, okay, or a U1 or even better, a U3 will be even better. When you insert, you can hear a click and then uh, raise upper this metallic uh, to avoid an accidental ejection during crash. Okay, so uh, the uh, front. Uh, towers with the two play is dedicated with the run cam split mini we have a ribbon cable uh, we have a 120 uh, degrees for the 10 uh, uh, the fpv link okay and already are pre-flash uh, by inserting the firmware into the micro sd card the last firmware of the rec run cam split mini it's in version 2.0 improving a little bit uh, the fpv latency and so on so the improving and uh, i will say uh, resuming make more easier and simpler the OSD, osd navigation now on the back side we have two electronic boards the lower one is the 25 amper esc okay and the upper one in the video transmitter okay so this is uh, up to 200 uh, milliwatts from the old milliwatts in pit stop 25 100 and so on okay and link with the uh, uh 
Rear side antenna via a micro uh, FL antenna uh, connected to the VTX board. Uh, this one is supporting a smart audio ERC tram protocol. And I will say, physically, good news uh, the um, video transmitter can be in theory be controlled via the OSD because the uh, solder, the wire between the uh, video transmitter, smart audio output, to a uh, one uh, free. Uh, and in this case, for this board, is the UART1, a free RX uh, input of the uh, UART1. And the last electronic is the Fly F4 board. Here is not flip of 100 uh, flip uh, over ups and down, it's just installed like this, where we can find here the battery strap. And everything is soldered directly, no connector, it's very small. And in fact, in practice, we have only two UART uh, ports available, the UART1, and as I said previously, uh, the video transmitter is soldered uh, here to control the VFREC, V-band, and uh, the output power. And the UART6 here used to connect the S-Bus connections of the built-in receiver. And the receiver is here installed here. And the first thing to do is probably, the first time you will, to take the Allen key and you will need to remove the four Allen key, raise the upper uh, carbon plate to access more easily to the bind button on the PSK uh, XM Plus. And this one is directly soldered on the uh, F4 board, no connector. And the bad news, this one is not flashed with uh, the RSSI friendly firmware. And if you want to get it, you will need first to desolder these three uh, wires from the F4 board to another to make your connection to your Taranis radio, whatever. So first bad news, no RSSI for the FSK XM Plus uh, receiver. It's I don't know why they install such. They don't take any five minutes to flash one. It's very sympathetical to receive the RSSI on USD. Second, I will say bad point. I will continue with the bad point is about the rank and split mini. Since there is only there are only two free ports and they are body, the UART one and the UART uh, six. Uh, no free uh, UART port to, uh, for example, make the connection between the Runcan split mini with the flight controller in order, for example, to control the trigger, the video triggering, recording via switch of your radio. If they were, there was a free UART port, the, this possibility uh, could be uh, true, but it's not the case in practice. That's drawback. This uh, F4 board is uh, limited in terms of uh, 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 available UART uh, port. This dislike, despite the fact that the F4 board should support in theory more than four UART. Here, in the case, there are two physical ones. Uh, so, uh, what I don't like is also everything is solder no uh, connector to make your life more easy, for example, for update. So it means that the red cam need to be triggered manually thanks to this two button. So there is the auto recording option. As soon as you reboot this uh, uh, quadcopter, the recording will be turned on. Okay, so you will need at least to press one to stop at your end of your fight. And uh, the rear button here, is uh, one is long press is to enter on the OSD. So you will navigate between different options by pressing the front one, okay, validate uh, by uh, short press the rear one, and exit from a uh, current menu by uh, long pressing the uh, rear one. So it's more like classic, and as I said previously, I already pre flashed the uh, new version of the firmware where can split minimum. On the top, Right side, we can find the micro USB for the F4 connection. So to beta flight, it's uh, the version 3.3 pre-installed. And bad news, at least for the uh, video transmitter, nothing is pre-configured. So no ARC tramp on the UART 1 is pre-selected. And in fact, with this version of beta flight, when I already did my first test, it, it's not working. You can whatever select the ARC tramp. Is, there is no possibility to change the VFREC out of the box, uh, the V-band with this machine. You will need probably, and I have to be confirmed, to update the beta flight version 
to access to the possibility to change via the OSD to the VFRAG, VBAN, the output power and the uh, pit stop, for example. Let's now focus on the real side. We can find the XT30, a 3D printed support to welcome on the uh, uh, RPC mail connector. And be aware, if you fasten too much the um, uh, antenna, uh, you, the uh, connector is not completely blocked by the uh, 3D printed. Uh, you will need to probably to use a wrench behind to completely secure the installation. Here another 3D uh, printed, in a, my point of view, very fragile, are locked with these two lower uh, M2 X screws. And welcoming, okay, here the two uh, uh, caps to filter out any motor, anti any interferences coming from the motors or vibration. So it's nice design, but you can see that uh, the uh, uh, this profile here will touch the ground, okay? And from my point of view here, the stress will be a lot and various time will break. So I'm not a great fan of this design and it's bring a lot of weight. So, uh, to resume uh, the uh, first analysis of the, uh, um, of the uh, electronic compound and the frames, uh, in my point of view, the frame will be a little bit fragile, at least for the uh, camera holder. Three millimeters harm is a minimum. It should be okay, okay. But in case of super fast crash in concrete, no miracle. It's AV, okay. Uh, for mine, uh, the props was not were not here. Uh, the antenna connector, I'm not great fan of it. Uh, another stupidity is, uh, you know, you have to answer the tube here, but the hole of this. 3D printed are not large enough. You will need to drill to enlarge them to in, in order to insert the uh, tube to, for your antenna. Uh, the pitch, uh, be aware with the uh, uh, run cam split mini ribbon cable here, but uh, you, it's authorizing the uh, really aggressive um, pitch angle, which is not so bad. Uh, what I don't like, you have to trigger both the video control. Uh, I forgot to mention where it was. It was here on the left side. Okay, you just need to push gently. Um, here you have, you can find the video transmitter button. So uh, if you short press, uh, you will uh, cycle within uh, the 8 v frame inside the current uh, sele V-band selected. Long press more than 2 seconds, you will cycle between the different V-band and press more than 10 seconds, you will uh, cycle between the different output power. What's a pity? that out of the box due to the butterfly 3.3 is not possible to tune everything from uh, your OSD. And the main, well, I would say it's not really problematic, but what's the drawback also that like the SPC Maker S125 is not possible to control. Uh, the uh, run cam split mini as well via the OSD will have been a great, great plus. The link with the absence of uh, two extra UART on the F4 board. Whatever it's heavy, Okay, so we will see in terms of stability, as you may know, the first iFlight EH3 was suffering a lot of oscillation and required a lot of um, uh, PID tuning. You have to know that the board here is installed on nylon and some uh, O-rings, four more rings, so it should amortize a little bit the uh, vibration transmitted. Okay, so now it's time to check the beta flight pre-configuration and I will probably as soon as possible to install the last available, uh, the uh, version 3.5, okay, and I will also uh, be sure that it's confirmed that out of the box, uh, the VFREG V-band output power selection is not working, whatever you're selecting the RC tramp uh, protocol into the protection of the current Betafly 3.3. Okay, so let's check the default Betafly version. So immediately go to the CLI section, okay, check the current version. We have effectively for an Omnibus F4 uh, with OSD board, uh, the version 3.3 is not the ultimate one. Now we are currently in the range 3.5. It's strongly advised to dump whatever, all this information into a text file, okay. So you can click directly save to file or copy and paste into a, an empty one. Uh, all this information and in case of uh, restoration, okay, you can immediately 
as I already did here, uh, restore all the information by uh, pasting all this information and don't forget to end with the save command to restore all of them. Okay, let's go. So I will first of all reconnect to the machine and let's check the immediately uh, the port. We don't see any RSSI. I will turn on the radio, okay? And unfortunately, nothing is happening currently. Uh, let's go and check that in the port. We have uh, for the uh, Fiesca XM Plus connection the UART6 uh, serial turn horn, okay? Very important, but for the UART1, as I said previously, and um, electronically linked with the video transmitter, as you can see, there is no ERC trim selected by default. The ERC UART3 in theory is here, but uh, no port to solder anything. It would have been great, for example, to uh, connect the uh, uh, Rencam Split Mini on it. It is not possible. Let's go to the configuration. We have a Quad X. D-Shot 600 is turned by default. By default, we have the 8 kilo, 2 kilos accelerators and barometers is pre-selected. I don't know why, so can be uh, turned off very easily. Uh, okay, let's check that. We have the uh, RSSI serial uh, connector receiver in SBUS configuration. Okay, we have the uh, LED strip turned on, but we don't have any light, so it's useless. So it can be turned off. Okay, and as well, and at least the OSD is here, so we can uh, save all this information. It will a little bit save some load on the CPU. Okay, let's reconnect. Effectively, we go down to four percent. is not a huge gain, but it's better than nothing. For the power and battery, okay, we have the default LiPo settings: 3.3 minimum cell, 3.5 for the warning, and max. To 4.3. Okay, for the face safe is classic, nothing. And let's check the PID tuning. We have exactly uh, the default uh, Betafly 3.3 version. So it will be up to you to uh, tune your PIDs, at least your rates. Okay, so for the uh, receiver section, we have here, okay, is already pre bound. So since I'm using a uh, uh, jumper T8HG, I uh, changed the channel mapping to a uh, Fear Sky Futaba, so starting with error on elevator, throttle, and rudder, so on. By default, is more for the uh, Terranis with the throttle and, and etc. Uh, strangely, uh, the RSS size for the OSD is selected on new uh, OX4, so it's assuming that there is an 8 channel uh, receiver behind. There is a possibility to fly to XM Plus with only eight channel in order to reduce the latency. But as you can see, no activity in X4 so, uh, for the RSSI, so it's not the case. So it's uh, completely useless, but by default it's more to, uh, it's better to select the AUX12 for the 16 channel for the RSSI if flashed correctly with the corresponding firmware. No air dead band, whatever. For the mode, we have an arming switch by default in upper position for the hard one, and it's automatically arming and select the angle mode, okay? And uh, for the uh, air mode, okay, you can use it thanks to the upper position of a second three position switch. And we have also a third switch for a flip over there, crash, sorry, uh, associated with another third three position switch. Uh, the flight mode for me is uh, not very uh, intelligent, whatever, but can be adapted to your favorite choices. So let's continue. Uh, we have motors, we have the OSD information. So we have the main battery, crosser, artificial horizon, horizon sidebar, no timer, for example, the flight mode, no throttle position, and unfortunately, no uh, RSSI. Uh, by default, the uh, Runcam Split Mini is an NTSC format, but you can change it by entering into the OSD, as I mentioned, by long pressing, long pressing the rear button of your Runcam Split Mini. Okay, except that uh, everything is by default. So um, it's confirmed, okay, uh, that via the OSD is not possible 
with this version 3.3 to control the video transmitter and the VFRAG by default. So what I will do now, I will check if with Betaflight 3.5 it will work. So now let's install it. Okay, so let's try to flash and in fact I already uh, flashed the last version of Betaflight but not yet configured. Uh, one important remark to flash. You must absolutely have to have the last driver to enter into the DFU mode and you will need also to press the tiny uh, boot button located to uh, nearby the uh, micro USB port uh, called port of the uh, F4 board. So it's tricky uh, to be honest to flash this version. I attempt maybe close to 50 times to understand the right uh, combination, the right combo. It's not super clear, uh, but uh, I. Uh, didn't plug the battery, so it just by the USB powering. And first, I press and hold this uh, boot button while uh, inserting the USB into the main computer board. And after uh, multiple tries, I saw uh, here a DFU app ring, it means that uh, the DFU uh, mode was working. Uh, please check the no reboot sequence for chip erase and of course select the last available. Okay, so now it's down. Okay, and if it's not working, if you press the flash, you should see uh, if not working this type of message. No response from the bootloader. Okay, I repeat, uh, you need uh, first to keep and hold the boot button. Okay, why I'm inserting the USB. Whatever, it's flashed and I will connect the. Um, machine and show you that I've got effectively the last version. So I hope with this version uh, the ERC trim will work. So we have to reconfigure everything from scratch. So I will press connect. Okay, go to the port. And the first thing we have to turn on the serial uh, for UART 6. Okay, and I will enable the ERC trim for UART 1. Okay, press save and reboot. So now we have to continue. Let's go to the configuration. Okay, select of course D shot 600. Okay, we will keep by default no specific board element was present. We can disable the barometers and magnetometers. Okay, if you want, you can push everything to four kilo, four kilos. Okay, like this. Um, let's continue with the personalization. And we have to turn on the USD. The, we can turn off the anti-gravity and we can also keep on the uh, dynamic uh, dynamic filter. Let's um, save, reconnect. Okay, the CPU usage about three four percent, so it's still pretty low. Let's go. We don't change anything for the power and the battery, the face safe as well. And the PIDs have been changed, okay, but I will apply more of my favorite um, rates, okay, to be about uh, 900 degrees for the P channel or axis, okay. So, and for the, uh, yeah, more for something more linear, something about 600 degrees, okay, so we can save that. And uh, we have the anti-gravity mode, new uh, possibility within last beta flight. Um, as you may know, there is a very nice one, the feed forward, uh, which is a kind of um, uh, algorithm to uh, take into account that you push fast or slowly the sticks during some maneuvers. So you can apply super high rate if you move very fast your sticks, it's a very cool features. Let's go for the receiver, I will turn on my transmitter. Okay, and I forgot here in the configuration as well to select uh, the uh, receiver. So it's a serial based, based one and more specifically SBUS connection, save and reboot. Okay, now I should be I should be okay for the receiver section. As you can see, yes, everything is center. I'm in the right channel mapping. Uh, no activity in AUX12. Unfortunately, we will apply whatever some dead band. Okay. 
and uh, be sure that off your channel is center more or less about 1500 and we don't have uh, nothing about uh, 2100 100 2000 2000 1000 2000 sorry so everything is here okay we can save now let's check the flight mode we will probably assign if it's possible we would see in the receiver section what switches we have okay we have probably this one as well okay but i will uh, actually um, use classic way to harm so i will apply angle for the uh, ox2 okay this one horizon in the middle and for the angle i will add the anti-gravity okay and the air mode here okay for harming i will use more the uh ox one okay and i will apply more the butter when uh the beeper when Ox one will be in the middle position like this. So everything is great, and if we had, for example, an extra switch, we can, for example, have the flip over crash or the VTX uh, pit mode, which is a, a great, great new features as well introduced. So now what I want to do is more to look into the OSD settings. Okay, everything is turned off by default. Uh, since there is no RSSI uh, compatible firmware, I will don't display, I will don't display the RSSI value, but the main battery, of course. I will display something about here. Uh, the crosshair, very important. The timer too, okay. That should be about here. Um, the flight mode as well, more in the middle. I like to uh, display the throttle okay, somewhere like this and uh, everything is here. I will confirm that in an NTSC and we will play more. Uh, so I have to uh, modify a little bit the layout because we're in NTSC. Hmm. More higher. Should be okay right now you can save okay apply some stuff element and also change the font i will use a new model okay so we have the, the how they change a little bit the way of uh, we will clarity is the right one and I will upload the font. I really like this one. Okay. Try to reconnect. We have the clarity installed. Okay. And everything is here with very low, low CPU usage. That's great. Now uh, I will check that the uh, ERC tramp is not working. First garden attempt to take off with the iFlight iH3 Pro. So I kept the default Betaflight 3.5 and good news now ERC Tramp is working uh, so you can order whatever your video transmitter frequency or band or output power via the OSD. Okay, that's great. So you need absolutely the 3.5 while the 3.3, the default one. Uh, it's not working with the RC tram. There is some buggy stuff in each uh, zero version of the um, beta flight uh, a build in general. But for this one, 3.5, it's okay. I will just try to attempt uh, to fly in my garden to check if it's flying correctly before to go in the field, as usually. And uh, because um, you know, this F4 board got some uh, uh, barometers, uh, sorry, a compass accelerometer, sorry, gyros which is um, the um, 
186 if I'm not wrong and this one uh, was the same that a former SPC maker product uh, where we met some crazy gyros and stabilities and oscillations so I'm afraid with this one we will meet such kind of problems this is why I want to attend first in the garden so um, the good news when you will turn on uh, the uh, quadcopter the uh, Orange Camp Speed Mini is automatically starting recording so if you forget to press record for the first time you will have your uh, first uh, FPV station at least let's go so I will turn on the machine okay and uh, turn on my radio the jumper ratio plus and uh, I will check that it's automatically recording you can see that it's a blue flashing so no problem and I will hum okay let's check that oh you can hear some strange Yaw jitter. Oh my god. It's not catastrophic, but you know, um, it will require some tuning, okay? And the trick is to not um, tight very strongly the flight controller and start on the top because if you tight it very very strongly you will meet some some oscillation in the jitter section well it's almost flyable but i still you can see some time to time some sporadic yo movement but yesterday when i try it it was much 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 more uh, violent uh, jitter i got a video i can uh, show you in overlay and it was crazy so what i did is i um uh, simply i will show you more carefully i will remove the um, battery i simply uh unfast untight the uh, four nylon bolt holding the flight controller and i will one more time probably uh untight a little bit uh, in order to the um uh rubber o-ring will amortize more carefully and probably between I will understand a piece of foam to be sure that the amortization uh, the dampening effect will be much more uh, stronger in order to eliminate the um, uh, noise uh, uh, sent to the gyro the MPU uh, uh, 60 uh, 180 98 if I'm not wrong uh, so I will attempt in a uh, new flight if I can reduce the oscillation Okay, so demo flight of the iFlight EH3 Pro in more in a wide open space uh, So I will also try to fly more slower to try to see if with the Rencam Split Mini we can approach a kind of super video or Stabilized one, you know in acro is possible and with just a basic uh, a stabilization a software algorithm we can uh, uh, produce some very beautiful video whatever so uh, I will also change a bit and I will show that it's possible to change the, uh, the now thanks to the betaflies 3.5 the uh, any um, video transmitter settings thanks to the uh, ARC tram protocol okay let's go <laughs>
small conclusion about the EH3 uh, Pro. Well, um, it's a good flyer, but whatever. It's pretty important, first of all, to update to a beta flight 3.5. It's not out of the box. If you want to enjoy ERC, Tramp is a must to do. And I would say the more important this machine out of the box can and may probably will suffer from some higher jitter like this. The machine will turn like this spontaneously uh, on left and right. It's linked due to the uh, transmission, vibration transmitted, sorry, to the flight controller here uh, via the upper uh, carbon plate. You will have to gently unscrew, okay, and even better, uh, unscrew the uh, four uh, nylon nuts bottom, okay, to and in order to uh, insert some little play uh, into uh, the uh, gap between the flight controller and the upper uh, cable plate. I would say it will be even better if you can insert a piece of foam between, in order also to increase the dampening uh, effect. Okay, because this uh, gyro, built-in gyro, this MPU. Uh, 6198 is super sensitive to our transmitted vibration so I am not sure that the best location of this flight controller was on top maybe it was more on bottom I'm not sure you can install it maybe probably maybe there is some free room okay what I regret is the absence of you uh, UART um, 3 uh, RX of tech spin in order to plug the run cam uh, split uh, mini into the uh, flight controller in order to control the video triggering on it. So out of the box this machine requires some works. I would say uh, close to one or two hours of work. So it's not uh, dedicated for absolutely beginner. Uh, the when there is no uh, yaw jitter, this machine offers super stabilized video stabilization. That's great. Today was extremely windy and uh, the video was not so bad at all. The machine is powerful, it's a little bit heavy, more than 185 grams, compared to the um, SPC Maker S125, it's close to 30-40 grams more even, so you can feel it even in 4S. It's not bad, it's not ultra powerful, so it's something to fly, to shoot in, uh, I will say, in uh, uh, near range, um, in low riding mode, in order to shoot 1080p 60 frame uh, p, uh, videos. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this new video. If you like it, see uh, some bit and see you next time. Bye bye.